If I could sum up um, in a short phrase my relationship with God, um, it would be this, boundless, purposeful love. So I grew up in a, in a Chinese Baptist church, um, and when I was there, for most of my time, I, I treated what I learned more as a uh, compartmentalized subject for me to study rather than, um, rather than an active, life-changing, um, faith-building knowledge. Um, and so, you know, through most of my high school years and early college years, I found myself uh, in a state of darkness um, and uh, in a state of despair. Um, rather than in um, um, feeling joy and, and hope and, and peace that um, the Bible promises to those who, who walk with the Lord. Looking back on that time, I realized that I was living purely for myself. Now, thankfully, through all those years, um, the Lord in His gracious providence um, prompted me, pushed me really, to uh, continue spending time in His Word regularly. One summer morning, uh, I was reading a book by David Platt called Radical, and, um, and in this book, Platt presents the idea of, of living with all your um, intentions, all your hopes, um, all your energy, and all your focus set on the Lord. And at that time, that idea blew my mind and really, really shook me. I mean, what, what a profound thought to think that, that my own life was never, ever really about me. In Mark chapter 8, verse 34 and 35, Jesus says that whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever um, desires to lose his life for my sake and for the Gospels will save it. One thing is clear from that, that uh, our lives were intended to be for the sake of Christ and uh, for the glory of God. Um, so when I finally made that realization, that was when I began to really live um, and, and to live rightly. So that's my little story. Um, we'll fast forward a few years and uh, I meet Jess and um, we start to get to know each other. And I actually shared this same story with her. Um, but I think she'll take it from here and, and kind of explain her part, so yeah. Hey guys, uh, when I started to get to know Steven, I thought this guy's different. So cute, but total weirdo for anyone who knows who he is. Just kidding. Um, but on a real note, he had a light in him that was just so different than anything I was used to being around. I, after just a few conversations, I, I realized that that light in him was his deep love for Jesus. And he started to explain to me that he wasn't a perfect man. And because of that, he needed Jesus to be his savior. And really, because of that light in him, I was just so interested in continuing this conversation over the long distance video calls that we were making that, you know, despite the fact that I wasn't a Christian, um, nor did I even know what that even meant, but I knew that, like, if any of this about Jesus was possibly true, that I needed to know. And, you know, over six months of conversations about God, I um, realized how little I actually known about why I was living the way I lived. And one day in school, I came back home from a full day of seeing patients and um, just nonstop studying for my board's exam. And even though I knew I was supposed to pick up those study notes, I decided instead to pick up this book that Stephen got me a few months prior to that. Um, it was called What is the Gospel by Greg Gilbert. And it explained something so simply that my heart was just always too full of pride to accept until that evening. And it was that the good news of Jesus Christ was only useful to know after you knew the bad news. And the bad news was that it's in our nature to rebel against God by living selfishly or living for things of this temporary world. And I saw clearer than ever before that I was living a life just full of self-interest and each day that I was just trying to build myself up. And this really exhausting way of living just left me burnt out and never feeling fully satisfied. That night I, f I could finally swallow the fact that I needed a perfect savior um, that 
No one and no, nothing else in this world could be for me. Jesus said in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. I finished the book that night and immediately fell at peace. Just like that, any sense of dread I had was gone. The Holy Spirit removed the heart of stone that I had in me and gave me a heart of flesh. I'm just so grateful that God used that book to speak truth in my life. I really needed it. And even more amazing is that God used my love for Stephen to show me my greater love for Jesus. And as that relationship, my relationship with Jesus grew stronger, so did my love for Stephen. And I'm just so grateful that God puts this wonderful husband Stephen in my life um, who also loves God, just as I do. We want to celebrate our new lives in Christ and our new lives with each other.